Hi, this is Jules State, and you're listening to the FSF Podcast. The show where we found headphones and some microphones and said, shiny, let's be bad guys. Our show is brought to you by our charity sponsor, the Red Shirt Widows and Orphans Fund, which supports the Wish Upon a Teen Foundation that helps out sick kids when they need it most. And just imagine the comfort you'll give Red Shirt Crewman number 124. She'll know that when she puts on the Red Shirt and joins the crew of Serenity on a heist, hopefully without Yo Safbridge or whatever her name is, that she didn't leave her family destitute and without hope. Because the Red Shirt Widows and Orphans Fund has her back and what's left of our Mandarin swear words. All right, guys, our guest today is an actress who has entertained many folks throughout her careers on shows like Family Law, Stargate, Atlantis, and of course, Firefly. But I also appreciated her guest appearances on shows like Castle and Con Man. And also, by the way, if you guys haven't watched Con Man, what are you doing with your lives? Please go watch Con Man. <laughs> I laugh so hard. I've watched that series a couple different times. Anyway, I'm I'm getting off on a weird alternate route over here but those shows are just as memorable guys we are so proud and frankly excited to welcome jewel state to the fsf podcast welcome to the show jewel thank you so much you guys i'm excited thanks for having me thank you for coming we're we're just saying yes exactly (laughs) what she said so uh yeah, before we jump into anything nerdy here which uh, that is coming i'm sure uh nick is our resident stargate nerd and i'm sure he's brewing up something for you and and kathleen's i know has something firefly waiting in the wings uh but before we get my hair like kaylee for no reason (laughs) (laughs) Uh, but i wanted to talk to you briefly about something else because i literally discovered this two days ago and i was like where has this been oh my god this is awesome i like how your eyes get real big because you're like oh i know i'm like what did i (laughs) what's out there that i've forgotten about (laughs) i i did not realize that you had a blog yeah and i started reading things and i was laughing (laughs) i was very entertained by this blog especially where uh where especially where ducks were concerned um (laughs) <laughs> True story. However, what I'm curious about is where did you get the idea to say, hey, you know what, I'm going to put things out on a blog and where do you draw your inspiration from? Because your posts, honestly, that is comedy gold. Good stuff. Out oh, there. thanks. That just means you get me. <laughs> you, know, you know, it's so weird. Well, there's been a lot of things, honestly, before you answer just real quick, there's been a lot of things between your blog and your Twitter page. I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, I get that one. Because uh, oh, especially good. especially the conversations you've been having with your son about a, a few different things remind me a lot of me and my boys. And I'm going, oh, yeah, so it's not just me. Okay, cool. All yeah, right, most of the things my son says I, I can't post. Um, <laughs> Understood. <laughs> He's on, you know, you know what I mean. He's uh, He's on a roll right now. He's seven and totally insane. <laughs> and hilarious. Um, but I, I started the blog a long time ago because I found myself in this, you know, hiatus from some sort of show and I never know when it's going to end. You know, you never really know when you're going to go back to work. And I thought I have to do something for my sanity, really, um, and find a new passion and, and figure something out to do in my time off. And I love to cook. I love to write. Um, and I thought I would pair those two things. So I started nice and slow and then it just became this really cathartic thing for me. Um, and I, I love to do it and I love to update it and, and I, I cook and post recipes and sometimes I don't post recipes at all. And I just go off on a tangent if I'm feeling tangenty, uh, but it's, it's, it's fun and it's just sort of a, a release for me. I get that. Yeah. I had a- I had a blog years ago and I, I started originally for the same thing. I needed, I wanted some way just to be able to talk about things that I really wasn't sure how to talk about or if anybody would actually understand them. And so, mm-hmm. and then it went from that into just my random thoughts about odd things people wore to grocery stores and, you know, other <laughs> things like that. And it, it yeah. just became a very, I, I kind of went with this lane. This is where I'm headed with it. And then it just like took a very quick and broad stroke to the left and, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. And Sometimes then it just kind of dissipated. Yep. Yeah. I, I think, you know, the, the trick is to just sort of forget that people are reading it in a weird way. I feel like that's when I'm at my best is when I just stop caring about what everybody's going to think about it and then just come from a place of authenticity and, and honesty. And it's also been always been really important for me to 
I guess just be myself and have myself out there because I played these different people for a living. <laughs> and, and, you know, and I, I think people forget that actors are people and we're complicated people and um, artistic people who need some kind of other outlet to get some of that creativity out. And actors have a lot of downtime too. I, I was talking to, you know, a friend of mine who was saying she's on family law with me and another actor approached her and said, how's the show going? You're so lucky. You're so lucky to have that show. I would love to have a show. And Janelle said, well, it's not all it's cracked up to be because you basically work for three or four months out of the year. And then the rest of the time you're sitting at home under contracts. So you're not really allowed to do much else twiddling your thumbs and hoping that you still have a job at the end of this is. <laughs> I guess really anxiety inducing and actors tend to be really anxious people. Hmm. So, you know, the, the distraction definitely helps for sure. You know, that's actually a really interesting idea. I, I guarantee that nine times out of 10 or nine out of 10 people rather don't really understand the, you know, the, the gap in the, in the workload. No, because I honestly, I, gap, you know, and like there's one yeah maybe of actors in the union who are working all of the time, right? Who are, who are probably getting too much work and they're exhausted, but they're afraid to say no, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you say no, then, you know, maybe people will stop asking and stop being mm -hmm. interested in you. Mm -hmm. It's a very strange business and it can be really, really hard on you. So it's, it's, I feel like it's just this constant battle of trying to find balance and trying to enjoy the time off when I have it. Because when I'm working, it's all consuming, right? And I'm, sure. I'm not home enough and I'm not around my kid enough and I'm sad about that and feeling mom guilt and all of that stuff. But then when I'm around here, I'm like baking cookies and like trying to entertain this seven-year-old who's mouthing off to me constantly. <laughs> 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 it's like, what happened? Don't you know I'm a big deal? He's like, no, you're not, mom. <laughs> you are mom. Where's the cookies? Yeah, yeah. it's like, make me a sandwich, will you? Exactly. <laughs> Oh, so I have also found together. <laughs> yeah, I have also found your TikTok to be incredibly oh, cool. entertaining. Thank um, you. I I love it. And honestly, it was so funny as like the the first one of your videos that showed up in my FYP was you just correcting somebody for the no, of course I look different. That was 20 oh, years ago. I get that. And I'm like Oh, oh, snap. Follow. <laughs> it's it's like, a real thing. It's a oh thing that comes up again and again. And not just to me. Lots of actors I know get the same thing, right? Like, yeah. I've done a lot, of, a lot of conventions. And when you're sitting at the autograph table, you, people will come up and blurt things out um, that you just kind of have to take. <laughs> How dare you age like a normal human being? Yeah, they're like, you look different. And you go, thank you. <laughs> Dude. What are you supposed to do? Right? Yeah. But it's as weird. I have been following... I'm just just stuck double filling in today. Right? I know, right? <laughs> as I've been following you, I actually found your video where you sorted your cats into their Hogwarts houses. Which yeah, that's when you know I need to go back to work. I yeah. love, because I also did that. I have a Hufflepuff <laughs> and a Ravenclaw. Yeah. Uh, and and my tuxedo cat is my Hufflepuff. And like I told my husband that I had looked at this TikTok, and he's like, is Ernie a Hufflepuff? Yes. <laughs> it's it's accurate. Yeah. 100% yes. Yeah, it but, pegged our little one as a Slytherin straight away, and I went, yeah, that, that See, tracks. and that was, that was what you said, was that it was the most accurate thing you had said, or you had seen. 100%. So I am going to be the weirdo that then asks about your cats, because now I yes. need to know their names and what it is Please about do. their personalities. <laughs> I, I talk a lot about my cats and, you know, I've been told maybe you talk too much about your cats. <laughs> I really <laughs> roll. Um, we have this, this older one, this two-year-old, they're both rag dolls. So they're, you know, super cuddly and affectionate. And anyway, I, I felt bad for the older one for Alice because she would sort of stare out the window and we got her this kitty tower, this kitty perch thing. And we're big house of the dragon fans. Oh, yeah. So my husband, Charlie, would say, there's Allison in her high tower. <laughs> I like it. And we thought, you know, she needs a buddy. She needs a friend to kind of harass her and keep her life interesting. So we got this little white one with these big pale blue eyes. And she's a hellion. 
<laughs> and you know chases her and knocks her off the tower and so charlie was like can i name this one and i said yeah and he said i think we need to call her rhaenyra <laughs> so now we have we have alice and rhaenyra the I dueling queens it. and uh what can i say we're a nerdy household and i'm just that's just who we are man <laughs> i that's awesome. absolutely love that so my my older cat my six-year-old cat is also a game of thrones related name she's nymeria oh. Oh, perfect. But she's Nymeria Patrice. So her middle name is based off of how I met your mother, which mm-hmm. is even better. Yes. Uh, but then my my tuxedo cat, who is my Hellion, is Ernest Fitzgerald. So he's named after uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald and Ernest Hemingway. That's pretty class. <laughs> he That's is because he's a tuxedo cat. and he's he's yes, supposed to he be fancy. a classy name. Yes. Fancy and then boy. he sits like Al Bundy in my hallway. He'll sit and he's got his paw <laughs> across <laughs> and I'm like dude if you had <laughs> pants on that paw would be in the front of them like that is just how he sits i'm like i gave you a fancy classy name and you sit like al bundy uh-huh. that's just rude he heard you. But, did he score, but did he score four touchdowns in the fourth quarter that's what i need to know um, no. so my four-year-old has started just calling him nern and i'm like yeah that fits better mm-hmm. i gave you this there big you fancy name and now you're nern <laughs> but i love that they i love that you have alice and renier that's great yeah, more, our little queens yeah <laughs> and the hierarchy changes on you know a daily basis but renier definitely has a lot of fire in her so oh it's, she's very appropriately named yeah nice yeah and then our, our dog have... sorry our dog is firefly named she's zoe oh. jane that's a great name for a dog. I mean, Kaylee would be a better name for a dog, but that's a great name for Kaylee a dog. is a fantastic name for a dog, and we actually fostered a pit bull that her name is Kaylee. So my okay. friend Anna has a pit bull named Kaylee who is best friends with Zoe Jane. Okay, I'll take it. Kaylee's right. awesome. <laughs> She's awesome. Her full name, though. Sorry, Tim. I know you want to talk about your Go pets, ahead. too. No, you're Anna's fine. Anna's dog, her full name is Kaylee Ann Rose Barkowitz III. God, that's a lot of names. It is. And it's so funny is if you actually get mad at the dog and use all of the names, she all drops the names. to the ground like a little kid would use their middle name. Well, that's yeah, incredible. she's confused at what language she's being yeah, yelled she's at. Like, what so. did you just say to me? <laughs> she's usually Too just Kaylee I don't know what to do. <laughs> she's I usually just, just, just Kaylee Ann. But every once in a while, the whole name comes uh-huh. out and it's like. <laughs> I took I took Rhaenyra to the vet for her first little checkup because she's just a baby. And I, and I, they asked me for her name and I, I got embarrassed and I didn't want to say like, like Rhaenyra. <laughs> so I said, her name's Ray. And she was like, Ray? And I'm like, yeah, it's Ray. Cause I was so embarrassed. You're so stupid. And also like, I didn't want to have to like spell out Rhaenyra in the vet's office. So I was like, I got to get out of here. This is just. That's awesome. I love the that's colors. A, that's a, a, a couple of years ago when our oldest cat got sick, his name is, he got some infection around his eye and we had, and his, his like, I got all puffy, he got scratched or something. And so we took him to the vet and, you know, and they're like, what's his name again? I said, <clears throat> Vader. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great name though. <laughs> At, which is, it's fitting. He's all black, got a white box on his chest. He's a bit of a jerk. Uh, but uh, yeah, so it was just, you know, the everybody that kept walking in the room, we like, What's your cat's name? Vader. Vader. I'm, I'm a Star. I'm a Star Wars fan. So, so his name's Vader. Vader. Uh, That's cute. I've heard some pretty great names when I've been waiting at the vet's office, though. Like, oh yeah, I oh, have a, oh, I know, I know. I have a friend. His name, his dog's name is Hunter George Bitehouse. Um, That's pretty good. And the dog that they had right before him, his name was just his. His name was Kevin. Kevin. I'm like, just you Kevin. have Kevin. Kevin, oh, and then. Hunter George Bitehouse. <laughs> well, we've got Toast. We have a corgi. Her name is Toast. Toast. That's a great. Right. But her but her full name is uh Mrs. Toast Ms. Toaster von Strudelbutt. Right. So, of course. But because she's she is fancy and she's highly yeah. judgy. And she's yes. a corgi and she's got a little loaf butt. Yeah, yeah. Like, but they're like cute little bubble butt. Yeah, with about a three inch vertical leap. That's about all she's got. <laughs> she tries her best. Aww. She but does. she's also like she toasted does. marshmallow colored and she's like a little puffy cloud. Cute. Yeah, she is. Sorry, I snuggled with toast so much last time we were at your house. <laughs> like you she'll, belong she's still here waiting. now. Yeah. <laughs> she's waiting for more, trust me. Oh yeah. Thank you. So Jewel, I didn't even yes. realize that you played a Wraith in Stargate Atlantis. That was yeah. I was like, oh, 
I didn't even realize that. And as I looked closer, I was like, oh, it is you. And so granted, it is easier to hide behind a mask. But mm -hmm. even so, when I watched like other characters that you have done, I don't realize that it's you. And oh, I really good. appreciate that. And like, I love it when an actor can like not be themselves, I guess you can say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what is it that you do to prepare for a role? And like, what is your process? Um, I mean, it's, it's not, thank you for saying that, by the way, because that's, that's the, that's the thing that every actor wants to hear. Um, it's, it, it can be a little tough to come up with a character's personality on the fly. I mean, a lot of people don't realize that we get these scripts right before we start shooting you know we don't have months and months to prepare usually usually it's very quick especially in television so you just kind of have to come up with certain quirks and and things that they would do with their hands or expressions they would make or you know things like that the feelings that they would have about certain things make bold choices and hope that the producers and the writers um, appreciate what you're trying to do, right? And if they do, you'll get the job. Um, but uh, prosthetics and wardrobe definitely help. I mean, anytime you know you look different than who you actually are is 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 very helpful. Um, but it, it's different every time, and I, I think I just sort of start to try certain things and maybe get inspiration from people I know. Um, you know, Abby from Family Law has this really uh, kind of biting sense of humor, and she hides a lot of her insecurity behind the sense of humor, and she can be quite crass. Um, and my dad had this really crass sense of humor and this sort of delivery that he would use. So I've started to do that with Abby. And luckily, they liked where I was going with that. Um, but, you, you know, you basically just you take risks as you go along and then you kind of find it as you go as well. And and um, it's it's a process. And I think that's why I love doing television so much, because you usually not always, but usually get a longer time to explore that character and and figure it out. But I don't have a super complicated process you know I, I i know actors who do and i totally appreciate that but you know i could lie and say that i do a lot of research and all of that whatever i don't <laughs> so you didn't go through and find all the parts of a spaceship no god no no, no. sets also help get you in the mood believe me Boy. when you're on a you know a realistic looking set that can be very helpful so what was some of your inspiration like behind kaylee um, I mean, she was very, very well fleshed out. I, I remember before we started shooting the show, we were, were given um, uh, a Bible of sorts of all the things that we should know about the world of Firefly. And all of those characters had pages and pages on them about um, the things they loved, the things they hated, their motivations, their, you know, everything, basically. Um, and, and so that was, that's very unusual to get something like that. And it was incredibly helpful. So Kaylee from the start came from this place of, of, um, innocence, but also, um, honesty. And she was just not embarrassed. She was never embarrassed to, to show that honesty and to just sort of wear her heart on her sleeve. And she loved machines, but she was super feminine and super girly. And she was really smart, but she was also kind of you know, still trying to figure herself out and, and gain that confidence, you know, that she was a 19 year old kid, right? She was still trying to figure it out. Um, and she was full of love and, and her, her soul kind of motivation was to show love and to come from a place of love. And I knew that. So it, it made entering any kind of scene, uh, playing her very easy because it was such a pure motivation. I think that's why she's such a lovable character too is the anybody who watched firefly as a 19 year old as a teenager looked at kaylee with the oh i get that yeah i get her yeah well, it's me but it's not but it, you felt like understood on some level and i think that yes. was why i related to her so much with the i'm, I'm a girl i'm a girly girl but at the same time i want to go out and have a lightsaber fight with my friends or 
I worked at a mechanic. I was out there chucking tires with the guys. I'm like, this is, there's nothing wrong with this. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. She was, she was pretty great. I mean, they were all so beautifully written, all of those characters, you know, they're all so Mm -hmm. different from each other. And, and Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't seem like, you know, putting them together would work, but the beauty of that show is that they, they only worked because they were with each other. Mm-hmm. You, right. you know, it's a, a reluctant family, but it was a family and, yeah. and um, it, it was lightning in a bottle really, because it was just the perfect combination of, of characters to, you know, really sell that, sell that world. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I think that what you just said was kind of interesting because it made me think that there's, there's such a just juxtaposition in, in some of the characters, but they're like on the one side you have, uh, Kaylee, who's so pure and innocent and just uh, very genuine. Uh, and then you have Jane, uh, who yeah. is the complete opposite. Uh, <laughs> right. And, you know, and, and is rough and tumble and will do anything for a buck, you know, and just, I don't know, it's just, I think that that's, and then you have the characters in the middle who, who are a little yeah. bit of go each way, uh, depending on the moment, but, you know, and then, yeah, it just, it's but very even, much. Like even but, Jane, so he was, so, he was, such a well-written character because he was rough and tough to do anything for a buck unless it came to Kaylee. Mm-hmm. Right? It was the only time you ever really saw a softness in him. One of my favorite shots in the whole show was from the pilot when Kaylee's been shot and she's being operated on and he's watching. He's kind of crouched down and he's watching through the window, worried, really mm-hmm. genuinely worried. Mm-hmm. It, there's all these little silent moments, right, throughout that show that say, speak volumes about who those people are. Understood. I, yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't write it. Obviously, I got lucky. I had a good audition. <laughs> um, I got lucky there, but I can. I can still. I mean, all these years later, watch it and appreciate it, and and kind of marvel at. I don't know the the beauty of the writing of that show, really. Yeah, understood. And now, a word from our show sponsor, Level Up Sabres. Their link can be found in the show notes. So let's follow that up with another Firefly question since I've, I had one in the, in the waiting in the wings. Um, now I have to be completely honest. Mm-hmm. I only got into Firefly within the last year and a half. That's okay. Uh, yeah. And here's the reason why. And it's maybe not, uh, it's probably faulty logic because I initially refused to watch that in the movie because there was only 14 episodes. Clearly how good could it be? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. And so I was like, they canceled after 14 episodes. How good could it be, people? I was wrong. It's freaking amazing. Mm-hmm. I have never been so happy to be so very wrong in all my life. Uh, but I look at this now, you know, here it is some 20 some odd years later. The the brown coat community is large. It's very strong. It's graining people yeah. every day mm-hmm. over here, too. Um, amazing. So what is it about the show? I mean, obviously you've talked about the writing, the character development, things along those lines, but what is it about the show that keeps people coming back to it, watching it over and over again, cosplaying it, talking about it, hoping that somehow, some way there's a return to the verse? I don't know. I mean, I've always thought maybe it was because we were the underdog from the beginning and and there's that whole the one that got away notion about it mm-hmm. that, that bothers people and makes people hang on to it so much. It feels like unfinished business, right? It's oh, this yeah. world that was was halted quickly. And even with the movie, you know, we got some things answered, but the movie ended on a note of what happens next. Yeah. So I, I feel like that has has given the, the brown coat movement um, momentum. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I I don't know. I mean, I the rest of the cast says this too. We just don't we don't question it. <laughs> Fair we enough. Fly in this beautiful wave, and you know we've we have this family of people around us uh, that have been with us the entire way, and um, it's it's a beautiful thing. And I I don't know I I know that a lot of us 
uh, would say most of us have, it was a short lived show, of course, but we have such beautiful, positive memories from it. And then all of the things that happened after, I mean, we got on this convention train and started riding the train with each other and traveling the world with each other and doing that for 20 years. You know, we're close. We have a firefly group chat that goes off all the time. And, you know, we are, we are very tight. We're, we're a tight knit family um, who has been through a lot together and uh, will always support each other no matter what. That's very cool. You know, and I think too, you know, I, I look at the, the success of your, of your guys show post cancellation and, and all the things that it's gone through post cancellation and the, the fans that have have flocked to it post cancellation is, is to me a, a better recommendation for the show than see shows that have had seasons and seasons, but yet they don't seem to attract people. Sure. They're, they, they, they're kept on because yeah, they have decent ratings, but there's not really a, a groundswell of, of fans around them. Like even so in our Facebook group, which is about 200, just shy of 210,000 members right now. Wow. The, the brown coat memes are strong in that. Group. <laughs> All um, right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The word shiny is used often. And <laughs> I try to use Gorham and Rutten just as often as I can. Uh, but, but yeah, it, it, to me, that's that's the biggest difference between what I see in, in the brown coat community versus what I see in some of the other fandoms, mm-hmm. is that there is such a, a love and adoration for mm-hmm. this thing that even though it was, it burned hot, it burned bright, you know, for a short time, but it left in a very indelible mark. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> it's uh, it's it's you know quite something. Like I said, we. There have been many, many times where we've marveled at it and gone, wow, you know, this is pretty crazy. <laughs> this is still going on and people still care to hear, you know, the same stories, right? I mean, we do Q&As and panels together and and I know, I, I recognize faces in the audience. I know <laughs> these stories, but they're still there <laughs> laughing and, you know, sure. enjoying it. And it's it, it it does mean a lot. So, you know. We, we are grateful. I know that a lot of the brown coats have followed us to other shows and support us and in, in other things that we've done. And that means a lot too, you know, it just feels like they've got my back and um, it's pretty awesome. I've seen the show many times. Like it's yeah. one that I will regularly watch on a year to year basis. And every time I watch it, it still runs a spirit through my heart. <laughs> Sorry, too? Too <laughs> All right, how do I get Nick out of this group chat? Where's the boot button? Uh, yeah. No, um, see, and that's the like I get to the point where I watch to the end of the show and I'm like, I could watch Serenity, but wash. I yeah, can't. I don't. I'm gonna it's I'm gonna stop things. here. Yeah. Oh it's sad. It's sad. It is. It is. Oh. So unlike Tim, I have been a brown coat for years. Um my husband was actually cosplaying as Mal when he proposed to me. Amazing. Which was, which was oh great. I was, and it's funny, I was actually dressed as River Song because I had the hair for River. So yeah. we had this Doctor Who Firefly crossover. That was a mm-hmm. lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the dinner music at our wedding reception included the Firefly and the Serenity soundtracks because that just makes great dinner music. <laughs> yeah, it really funny. did. Yeah, yeah. And it was so funny as a number of our friends that are like, is this Firefly? I'm like, yes, it is. <laughs> just wait it gets better and then we danced to a muppet song for our first dance it was it was a very nerdy wedding it was great also our our friend introduced our wedding or introduced the wedding party at our reception to the impressive clergyman speech from princess so oh wow it was there was a lot but yeah. it was great genre mashup oh it was awesome. so much fun it was so much fun but I actually just re- rewatched Firefly earlier this week in the I'm going to get to talk to Kelly because that's, <laughs> that's who I am as a person. Like, it, it, there's no hiding it. But I got <laughs> to what is by far my favorite episode. And I'm like, I need to talk to her about that. I need to talk to you about Shindig. Yeah. Because of that like... dress. Mm. So did you get to help choose the dress? And did you love it as much as Kaylee did? Um, they That dress was... Uh, sewn. It was made by Shauna Tripchik, who is our costume designer. She's incredible. 
Um, so it was made and I was very excited at first to wear it because I was always in the coveralls Mm -hmm. every day, every day. The shirt would change sometimes, but for the most part, I was in the coveralls. So I was super excited to wear something new, um, until I had to move around in it, um, or go to the bathroom or anything like that, sit in a chair, you know, because of the hoop skirt. So they would prop an apple box on the soundstage and I would sort of perch on it um so I think by day two or three I was super over it and there's a <laughs> uh, a scene where we come back to the ship and Badger is there mm-hmm. and you'll notice when we're sitting around playing cards I'm back in the the coveralls and I'm not in the dress anymore and it's because I batted my eyelashes on set and said please I I don't want to wear the dress anymore. Can I just, can I just get the coveralls? And Joss said, that doesn't make any sense though. Like why would Badger let you change? Do you know what I mean? Like he wouldn't let you leave the room and go and change. And I said, I know it doesn't make any sense, please. And I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why Ailey changes her clothes because I was so sick of that dress. <laughs> That's that's great. And it was so funny as I was when I was watching that episode the other day and you guys are actually at the party and there's the the scene where the the prissy nasty girls walk up to you and you're yes. totally excited about how wonderful this party is mm-hmm. and there's some sort of hot cheese over there and I'm like cheese. <laughs> so I'm like I wonder if do you actually get that excited about cheese and strawberries yes. as well? Not so much strawberries because strawberries I feel like are not that unusual i don't know they're around i can have strawberries whenever i want right cheese i have a big issue with i just i will eat it until i'm sick that's mm-hmm. sort of what it is so Fair enough. You know, yeah big big fan of anything cheesy I love um, that. but you know melted I, cheese yes please the, the, the cheese crust even is the best. oh god yeah. and my son who i know is mm-hmm. my biological son because i saw him come out <laughs> said you were there <laughs> He said, uh, he said, I, I don't like my grilled cheese tonight because the cheese is too melty. I said, what are you talking about? And he goes, when I bite into it, the cheese, the cheese strings pull away. And I don't like that. I go, that's called the cheese pull. And a lot of people work very hard to get a proper cheese pull in a sandwich. He goes, I, I don't like it. I'm like, okay, great. Thank you so much. So I, I guess it's not hereditary. But I, for one, love cheese. Which is funny because my daughter is the opposite of that. There have been days where my daughter has just eaten a bowl of shredded cheese. Like, really? Yeah, my kid, I don't know. He's weird like that. I don't understand. There there have been days where I'm like, I need you to eat something today. Oh, yeah. Just anything yeah. sound good. And yes. she's like, just cheese. I'm like, okay, do you want me to? I've got string cheese. We've got block cheese. Do you want a grilled cheese? No, I just want a bowl of shredded cheese. I'm like... <laughs> All right, let's go. If you're eating if something, could, that would be me. And it's protein. Yep. And, and then there's my daughter who has a milk sensitivity, but it's like, hey, let's make macaroni and cheese. And then she gets out, like she she doesn't like 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 fancy mac and cheese. She wants boxed craft mac and cheese. Yes, That's delicious. her jam. Yep. And then she takes the shredded cheese and puts that in on top of it. Doesn't matter what type of shredded cheese we have in the house she puts that in there to make it extra cheesy so that when you pull your spoon out of the bowl you do get a proper cheese pull off of that that sounds really good though yeah i mean yes so she does that and she'll doctor it all up so i need to make homemade mac and cheese again i know that sounds so i love mac and cheese it's so good and this is all I do, like on my hiatus. I just sit around thinking about what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> right? Well, and my husband, worse things. my husband has decided that this weekend is going to be a Lord of the Rings marathon weekend. And I'm like, sweet, go to the store, buy a roast, buy potatoes. I will make a big roast and potatoes for tomorrow night. But now I'm sitting here with the, but now I want mac and cheese. I know. That's what I want too. But I have a roast. What, what, what time is dinner? Fine. <laughs> <laughs> no. We all have something that is close to our heart, and surely many of your projects hold a special place in your heart. But what is a project that you have worked on that you wish had gotten a little more love? Um, I did 
I did this show a while ago called Fan, or, um, uh, The L.A. Complex. And it was a, a, the CW, it was a Canadian show. And the CW picked it up momentarily and aired a little bit of it. We did two seasons of it. And it's one of these shows, whenever anyone finds it, anyone I know finds it, they say, I, I caught this show. I, I never heard of it. But it's so good. It's so smart. And I loved it. Um, so it's one of those that no one watched but I think it's just really, really smart. And Martin Garrow was the showrunner on that show and um, the head writer on that show. And he's brilliant in everything he does and a good friend of mine, which is how I came to be a part of the show. Um, but it's it's this darker side of Hollywood. That's kind of the thing. That's the, the theme of the show is these struggling actors and dancers and, and singers in LA trying to make it and super broke and just sort of living these disastrous lives. And I thought it was really fun. It was just this juicy, you know, fun kind of depiction of the uh, underbelly of the entertainment business. And it's added to my watch list. I think you can find it somewhere. I, I don't know. I mean, people find it, right? I don't know where anything is anymore. And people are like, oh, hey, I saw, you know, blah, 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 and whatever. And I'm like, great, cool. That's good. Well, there's like 12 <laughs> billion streaming services now. Exactly. So you'll find it somewhere. Right? Yeah. So. Exactly. We, we got rid of cable to get 12 million streaming oh, services. And I then pay the same know. amount as cable. So I know. I think we're going to get rid of cable too, because we're wondering what the heck do we have it for anymore? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I don't I never watch anything on I, I stopped watching anything on live TV except for sports. I, I'm a huge hockey fan. So yeah. I would I would I'm a Red Wings fan, so I watched a lot okay. of Red Wings hockey. Um yeah. but even at that, there's an app for that. Thing. Yeah, that's what I was so, gonna say. There's an app for that. I can watch yeah. it, I can stream it on any of my Apple TV boxes, my Roku's, whatever, it all works. So yeah. Yeah. I think but, I think we might take the plunge and do that. I don't know. Yeah uh so yeah that's what we ended up doing but yeah. we're almost at back to a point of paying the same amount we were paying for cable tv because well, i know with all shows. the streaming you know that's what happens so yeah. that's how they get you well, uh, anyway <laughs> yeah and some of them are increasingly ridiculously expensive which yes. is stupid i mean i i snagged the um hbo black friday sale Oh, and I'm like smart. sweet. So I've got it for a dollar ninety nine a month for like the next. It was for six months. I'm like, this is fine. I can do that. That's fine. That'll save me a few bucks. Love it. But then it go. was the oh, but Brit Box, which is seventy dollars for a year, and I'm like, mm, there goes the money I saved. Mm. Yeah, it happens. It happens. And now a word from our sponsor. Since 1982, Vital Signs and Graphics has been helping professionals with all their image, logo, and design needs. Perhaps you're looking for signs and banners, truck and trailer lettering, business cards, brochures, or other image and marketing aids, Vital Signs and Graphics in-house design studio has you covered. From logos to apparel, start to finish, Vital Signs and Graphics has everything you need to look and feel professional. Call Rick at 231-652-3300. He'll get you noticed. Welcome back to the FSF Popcast. All right, so Joel, uh, many times when I see that someone who began acting at a, or a modeling at a young age, I wonder initially because of, you know, just being me, how much of that was the child and how much of that was the parents with their direction and influence. From what I read, you started off at the tender age of six or thereabouts yes. yeah. uh, in, the, in the acting and modeling area. So when did acting become important to you as a person and what were your influences to keep honing your craft? I think, you know, it, it, I, my, my mom was very good at, at reminding me throughout my childhood that, you know, it's just a job. Um, if you don't want to do it anymore, that's okay. But it's a job. It doesn't just because you're in front of the camera doesn't mean you're any more important than anyone behind the camera. You know, she was really good at like drilling that one okay. home. Um, because I did a lot of stuff when I was a kid for Nickelodeon and, and right. all of that. Right? Um, and then I think I was probably 12 or so when I started doing space cases on Nickelodeon. And that was my first series lead. And I thought, oh, this is different. 
it, it, it sort of dawned on me, I think that it was a job and it could be a really difficult job and, um, a fun job too, but, and rewarding, but at the same time, it was like, it was a, you know, it was a career. If I wanted it, it was there. And, and, and then I, I kind of went back and forth throughout my teenage years where, you know, there were some times where I said, I don't want to do this anymore. And, you know, my mom would go, okay, we better figure out something else then. And I'd go, okay. And then I would book another show. <laughs> like, Never mind. <laughs> this is great. But like those lulls, right, where I wasn't working or booking auditions were hard. They're hard on your self-esteem, especially when you're a teenager, right? And you're going through all of your awkward phases and things. Um, it can be really difficult. So I think there was a lot of like ups and downs and back and forths with it where, you know, do I want to do this or do I not want to do this? And and kind of toying with that. But I mean, you know, I don't think that, well, now I feel like I'm, I'm never going to leave. Like I'm like a gangster in this business now, you know, where I'm like, I can't, I can't leave. They've got only me. one way out. I know, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but it, uh, it's, it's not for everybody for sure. Um, but I, I always say that if you persevere, if you don't quit, if you don't go away, eventually they're going to have to hire you. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, this business is just not for the faint of heart. So, um, yeah, I feel like it became a, a career, a job very, very early on. We have a very large Facebook group where like mm, 209,000 members. That's yes. amazing. Wow. It is. It is impressive. Uh -huh. Um, and as Tim had mentioned, there's a lot of brown coats in that group. And we asked them if they had any questions for you. And one of them that stuck out to me was from Beverly Donna Penelope. Beverly Donnie Penelope, sorry. She asked, what's her favorite method of space travel? By ship or by walking through the gate? Ooh, well, walking through the gate's a lot easier, right? True. Um... But I mean, oh, I'd have to say ship. I'd have to say ship. Make a ship a home. That's, yeah, that's what I would want to do. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And the Serenity is such a wonderful home. Good home. Yeah. There you go. I love there you go, Beverly. Answer. There's the answer to that question. A good answer. Hmm. It, it's about the journey for you then, isn't it? I think so. I'm also a creature of habit, right? I like to be at home. I like to feel cozy. I like routine. I, you know, I, I that's why I love doing TV. I, I like working with the same crew for months and months on end. That makes me happy. I, I don't know. That's just sort of who I am, I guess. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So we love stories and you've definitely given us lots of stories and one of the stories we don't get as often are the stories from behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So was there like a hilarious moment that you haven't really shared that has happened behind the scenes? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I feel like I, I, I've shared so, so many of them, especially the Firefly, you know, stories throughout the years. Well, let's uh, skip Firefly. Let's yeah work with something else i mean i you know the, the family law cast we've all we've gotten very very close and, and a lot of them are not local so i felt kind of like you know the one that had to show them the city and you know welcome them <laughs> to our house on the weekends for barbecues and stuff right i was like welcome to vancouver i'm gonna show you everything there is to do in vancouver um, and we all became really tight and we started doing these like out of control karaoke nights where, you know, it would start off as kind of chill and we'd have a dinner and then inevitably at the end of the dinner, someone would go, so karaoke. <laughs> 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 karaoke room for hours until three in the morning. And Brett Kelly, who's one of my favorite people, he's the kid from Bad Santa. Mm -hmm. um, and he plays our um, legal assistant who we basically just abuse in the show. He's <laughs> one of the funniest people I know. He's he's the person who, with one look, can make me laugh and ruin a take very easily. <laughs> without even trying. Um, but Brett has this thing where he loses his phone a lot when we go out. It drives yeah. me nuts. So the first night when we all went out, I took everybody out for a night on the town. 
we ended up at karaoke. And at the end of it, we all kind of dispersed into Ubers, said goodbye. And there was no Brett Kelly. And we assumed, you know, Brett was upstairs in the bathroom, whatever. We left him there, which was a bad idea. Um, and a couple days go by, two, three days. And, you know, we're saying, talking in the group chat and there's no Brett. And I go, where's Brett? Did any, anybody hear from Brett? Brett, are you there? Dead silence. And we're about to go to camera in a couple of days. And I'm thinking, I've killed Brett Kelly. Like Brett Kelly is in a ditch somewhere <laughs> and it's going to be my fault. And I was sweating. And then he resurfaced like five days later. Hey guys, sorry. Uh, I lost my phone that night and I went camping with my parents the next day and didn't get a new phone for another five days. I'm like, I'm going to kill you. I thought I had killed you. Now I'm really going to kill you. So now when we go out with Brett, I'm like, where's your phone? Give me your phone. You get your phone at the end of the night. It's <laughs> like, I thought I'd do that again. Give me a heart attack. They're the best. <laughs> that is. He also awesome. has a good night. I'll tell you another one where um, Ryan Lino plays our our receptionist. He starts in season two, and he's so fabulous. And Ryan is Filipino, and he said um, at the end of uh, shooting um, last season, he said, "Guys, I'd love to treat you all to a traditional Filipino uh, meal." And Victor, you too. And Victor Garber goes, "Oh." Uh, Okay, well, that sounds wonderful. And I'm, I'm, you know, proud of him. I'm like, good for you, Victor, trying new things, right? He's like a little set in his ways. I love Victor so much. Um, but I can tell he's worried about it. But he's coming. He's coming to this Filipino restaurant. And oh, Ryan sorry. says, Ryan says, it's like, a, a, you know, a sit down dinner, but it's family style. And they put all of the food out on the table. So when you get to the restaurant, it's ready to go. All the food is there and you sit and you feast. Sounds fabulous, right? So we get there and we sit down and Victor's like, oh, he's like, where is the cutlery? <laughs> there is none. You eat, you eat with your hands. You, you, there is yeah. none. You know, there's potato and there's like, it's the most delicious food. And the look on his face, I'm telling you, was one of the funniest. I, have a, I took a picture of it. Let's see if I can find it. He, he won't get too mad at me. But like he was so horrified and he did it anyway. I was so proud of him. He did it anyway and he ate this whole thing, this whole meal with his hands. And it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. I can't find the picture, but um, yeah. So basically our whole goal on that show is to just kind of make Victor uncomfortable. And it really works. <laughs> And he's such a good sport. I'm gonna. I'll post the photo if I find it because I know. I know Victor will laugh. Oh, that'd He'll be laugh. great. Nice. Yeah, he's just like we're all like like it's like this family photo. We're all just like super happy with like food in our hands, and Victor's just like he looks like he hates his life. It's the best. Oh, I love it. That's fantastic. Anyway. Uh, I love right, so when you get into that like family group with the people that you're working with that you end up all having like that that same that. goal. The yeah. You find the one person that you're going to pick on, and this is your goal. Yes. With that it's like, that's hi amazing. Nick, how's it going? Good. <laughs> okay, Victor's so funny, and you know he's he's very very good about like being the you know butt of the joke, right? Like the, the person has to kind of be like in on it, and and he's also you know he's like our dad, right? Like we call him dad. We call him dad in the chat. Oh, that's We're like, cool. hey, dad, you there? And he's like, yep, <laughs> always listening. See, and I have I have the goal of making it so that Tim laughs so hard he falls out of his chair. And we've no. been this close so many times. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> come on, it's gonna, it's gonna happen. And it's gonna be one great. day. It'll be a maybe. Oh. Yeah, All right. So Jewel, we're we're at the stage in our show where uh one of two things happens. We either okay. take our guests through a, a quiz. Hey. Okay. okay. Or we ask a silly question. Today we're gonna ask a silly question. Okay. I was going right. to say, we're going to Because our, nah. our questions have been so serious so far. Exactly. So this is probably more serious than anything else we asked. All right. So in your opinion, what's the, what is the most annoying song and why? Ooh. Oh. Um. I mean, it's... Oh baby shark 
Baby Hands down. Baby okay, you won. Baby shark. Doo, 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 doo. I can't. I can't do it. I can't. No. I think that song was banned in our house at one point because I was like, "You have to understand, mommy. My ears are going to bleed if I hit that one more time." Mm-hmm. Like, okay. There yeah, were some it. theories that that song was actually the summoning of 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that makes way that more sense. Than it it all. That's exactly yeah. right. That was the curse that was put <laughs> upon us. Oh, oh my god, it's worse. Yeah. Which was worse? COVID, baby shark. Yeah. 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 Really. Oh my god. Yeah, the what? very first event that we took my daughter to, she was uh, six days old. And it was the, I just needed to leave the house. And so we went to a friend's graduation party. And the Mm -hmm. DJ's like, in celebration of John and Kathleen bringing their baby girl, this song's for you, and started playing Baby Shark. And I'm like, no. 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 Don't do it. That's absolutely horrible, coming out of giant speakers. No. (laughs) My my son has moved on to um, uh, Metallica and Guns of Roses. Guns and Roses. This is a fan. That's fantastic. Like, you don't want to hear it all the time. No. Do you know what I mean? Like, think about it if you had to listen to that mm-hmm. all the time. So he has headphones that he puts on. And when he gets dressed in the morning, um, he he's welcome to listen to his music, but he puts his headphones on so we don't have to listen to it at 7.30. And he's, of course, not allowed to swear. But I heard him say in his room, um, he's listening to a live recording of, uh, a Guns N' Roses song. He loves anything on YouTube, Guns N' Roses. And he goes, do you know where the you are? You in the jungle, baby? You in the jack? This <laughs> riddle. I was like, with my coffee. My first thing I'm like, the sun's not even up. I'm like, wow. That is the day we're having, isn't it? Oh, man. I couldn't believe. We were dying laughing. Oh, that's great, man. Yeah, this is why I see, like, I'm saying it on a podcast, but, like, I can't post a lot of this stuff on Twitter. People will come for me. Do you understand? Oh, God. Uh-huh. I, yeah. love, I love <laughs> stories from other parents. I think it's fantastic. Right? The, the number of times... About yourself? The number of times that I want to post things that my daughter says, so then I just message it to Tim with the, oh, my gosh, and he's like, <laughs> you're welcome. I have spit no. my coffee so many times with some of the things that Kathleen has sent me. And the thing is, honestly, nine times out of 10, the people who get their panties all in a bunch about things that get posted like this are the people who are the perfect parents because they don't have children. Exactly. You're right. You know? You're right. So they don't, they don't know what's going on. They've never actually had to, to raise yeah. a miniature version of them that all it wants to do is argue with you about being you. And, you know. Right. Yes. So. I say sometimes it's like arguing into a mirror, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I was I smart. I did it three times. I have three of I have three mini me's running around. Oh my god! I was at I my wit's vodka. end with oh my god, daughter. I need some vodka. I was <laughs> at my like wit's right. end with my daughter a couple nights ago, and my husband's like, "So what's it like raising yourself?" I'm like, "I will punch you in the face." <laughs> but it's true. That <laughs> okay. was not the time for that. Yeah, I, I've you know you lose yourself. I think sometimes in these like arguments with your kids, and you need someone from the outside to come in and go like. Ooh. Yeah, I like, need a ref. <laughs> yeah. Charlie's like, just let it go, babe. Let it go. This argument isn't going anywhere. I'm like, okay, you're right. You're right. I remember being in a grocery store when he was really young in a in a lineup. Um, and there was this older lady in front of me, and he wanted the candy bar. And he had a hold of it and he said, We're, we're gonna get this too. And I said, No, not today. And he said, Yes, we are. And I said, No, we're not allowed there. Put that back. And he goes, No. I said, put it back. And he goes, No. And now we're like like this looking at each other and we both kind of got a hold of the candy bar and I'm like put it down he's like no I won't and this lady in front of me sees all this go down and then wordlessly just starts unloading my cart onto the belt for me <laughs> oh I love her nice. takes care of everything you know and I'm like and, and I finally get it back from him and I put it on the shelf and she looks at me and she's like I knew you had to win that one. So I was just going to let you win that one and mm-hmm. take care of that stuff for you. I was like, thank you so much. She's like, you're doing great. I was like, Thanks. Absolutely. That's awesome. 
I was the kid that was the opposite. My mom would put cookies in the cart and I'd put them back on the shelf. And oh, like, really? No, we, we have them at home. And she's like... <laughs> Yeah. No, there was a there was a day that we were out taking my mother in law to appointments and it was to the point where my mother in law and I are both hungry. And I'm like, okay, so we're gonna go get food. And my daughter from the back seat, but mom, we have food at home. I'm like yeah. I am yeah. talking about going to to Subway or Panera or wherever, kid, and we have food at home. Isn't that the worst when they say like the logical things though, where you're like, you know what? I just yeah, you're right, but I don't need to hear that right now. I, I wanted to go to Panera, but whatever. Yes. You don't want to go get mac and cheese from Panera, and I won't buy yeah. any. If you ever heard me ordering tacos, and I always over-order, I would rather have more than none. Mm-hmm. Um, Solid plan. But, yeah, absolutely. Um, and I'm I'm ordering the phone, and I'm, you know, how many is that? Okay, and then we'll, and then we'll just do one more order of da-da-da, and I hung up the phone, and Father goes, it's a lot of tacos. <laughs> this kid kills me i swear to god yeah, just i like... just the stuff that you have written about him the stuff that i have read i just i'm like this guy he's like i'm like this is like the world's coolest little kid because really something he, yeah he's got a yeah. great sense of humor he's so. got an amazing sense of humor and he he's he knows it and then he gets laughs so it gets worse right mm-hmm. Where, yeah, it's not gonna get any better no, so. he gets encouraged all the time everywhere he goes. And so, I feel um, like I am just getting into that with my daughter because she's she's yeah, four. four is like where it begins. Yes. Oh man, and it it has it just started to hit, and I'm like, I am in this for the long haul with this one. Yep. Because yep. my yeah. nine year old nephew is still the same, and I'm like, oh crap. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. They're um they're re- they remember everything too. You know, like, like things. Oh yeah no and they tell you know it's just like yeah he came up he came on the other day and he said something interesting he's like hey mom are you like famous or something and i said no why are you asking me that and he said well there's a couple kids at school that said you're like famous or whatever and i said no i'm i'm just on some shows and their moms maybe saw me on some shows i'm just an actor right and he said well that's what i said I said, she's not famous. She's just an actor. (laughs) Nice. And my my daughter in the waiting room at a doctor's office very loudly one day did the, mom, do you remember the time you hit me in the head with the, and I'm like, yeah. I'm like, child. The worst. Randomly. And it was like, she walked into the vacuum cleaner as I was pulling my arm back. And like she got hit in the face with a vacuum cleaner, but the you know, all hit all me take. in the head with it. I'm like, what? Kid? And then we'll tell everyone, yes, very loudly. He's when he was like, he was just before he was three. He was in that hitting phase, you know, he would like mm-hmm. hit us all the time, mm-hmm. you know. And we'd go, don't, no, don't hit me, don't hit me, like that, right? Like I'm gonna take this from you, no hitting, don't hit me. So then we were in the grocery store once, and I don't know, something happened, and he said to me loudly, "Don't hit me, don't hit me," like that. And I was like, yeah. Oh, I know. And that is that my, moment my where oldest. too loud, you know, I'm like, I would never hit you. <laughs> and that is right. that you moment have to where compensate at that point. Yeah. Where every little old lady's head snaps. They haven't oh, been paying a lick of attention to you until that moment. It's like God, it was awful. Until until you're the imaginary abusive parent, then yeah, everybody in the store hears it. And is so, it is yes. it normal for you to have that moment of the I will let CPS take you? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah Especially when they're oh, <laughs> Especially when they're four, you're like, God, please, I can't do this. At, at 15, yeah, totally when they're 15 and talking back to you, uh, and you just look at them like, <laughs> don't tempt me. I might enjoy the night away. So uh, <laughs> right? Right. I told I told my daughter I was going to send her to her grandma's the other day, and she's like, but Nindy lives with us. I'm like, mm. the yeah, other grandma. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my mom. There you go. Send him your house. My kid loves his grandma, so I can't eat like they're they're you know, he knows if all threats are empty. So he's just like, well, whatever. Oh yeah, no, she loves both of her grandmas too, but it was the I'm gonna send you to the one that's three hours away, not the one yeah. who's across the hall. Like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. if I am telling you I am sending you somewhere, it is not to Indy's room. <laughs> oh. Well, Joel. Oh, it's an adventure. They are. It's an adventure. Yeah. Well, so Joel, fun. thank you so much for being on our show today. Oh, you guys- pleasure my pleasure thanks for having me thank you 
And yeah. where can our listeners go to find out more about you and your works? Well, I am on Instagram at my name. Uh, same thing on Twitter. And I'm on TikTok. Same thing. Um, and I love it there, weirdly. TikTok's my favorite one. And I have so much fun doing it. And I'm going to try and do it more. I'm still learning. I'm still learning. It's a learning curve. And I also have a blog, happyopu.net, H-A-P-P-Y-O-P-U, that I try and update uh, semi-regularly. And Family Law is going to be airing season two soon on the CW. And season three after that. Um, and yeah, we're hoping to just keep going and maybe get you a season four soon enough. Ooh. That'd be awesome. Awesome. Well, we yeah. will link your socials and your blog and make Thanks. sure that people check out Family Law. That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah, we also want to remind everybody that subscribing is the single most important thing that you can do to help our show continue to grow and get more amazing guests like Jewel State here today to have these great conversations and funny moments for you to listen to. So please subscribe. It really does help us out more than we can ever tell you. Your subscription means the world to us. Uh, but also, we want to make sure that you go check out Jewel's work as well. Honestly, her uh, Twitter page is just comedy gold. Her her <laughs> blog is amazing. And I didn't know she had a TikTok. I need to go subscribe to that as well. That's going to happen in, in about three minutes as soon as I'm done here. But if for whatever reason you are not happy with the content of our show today, please feel free to lodge a complaint with the head of our complaint department that of course is our guest jewel state you may say but she, yeah <laughs> and you may say but she looks so nice in that my friends that's how she gets you uh but once you submit your single copy of your complaint we as the objects of your ire now have to worry if we have wraiths or reavers coming after us because remember folks she was kaylee fry she was also Dr. Jennifer Keller. She has connections to both camps. So yeah, either way, we're in a lot of trouble. So maybe instead of reporting us, maybe just send us a strongly worded email. <laughs> just, we'd like to keep our faces. And not have a spear shoved through us. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Still too and soon. Still too soon. Way to go, <laughs> Kathleen. Thanks again, Jewel. You guys, you're so welcome. Thank you so much. That was awesome. You're wonderful. Thank you. All right, guys, that's going to conclude us for the FSF podcast. Goodbye. Ciao. Bye. Copyright 2023 FSF podcast. Reference to any specific product or entity mentioned on this podcast does not constitute an endorsement or recommendation by FSF podcast. The views expressed by the guests are their own, and their appearance on the program does not imply an endorsement of them or any entity they represent. If you have any questions about this disclaimer, please contact us via email at info at fsfpodcast.com. Original music by Jordan Michaels.